Let's talk about the medical world. It's completely changed its approach on GLP-1 medications between 2023 and 2025. If you think Ozempic, Wagovi are just being used the way that they were two years ago, you're in for a surprise. In this video, I'm going to break it all down, how doctors treated these medications when they were new and controversial versus how they're prescribing them now and monitoring them totally changed. And here's my challenge to you. Drop a comment telling me if your doctor today is more like 2023 doctors, cautious and receptive, or a 2025 doctor, open and proactive. All right, let's jump in. Hi, I'm Lori, and this is GLP-1 Journey in Review. Back in 2023, the conversation around GLP-1 was full of hesitations. Most doctors outside of endocrinologists and obesity specialists, they weren't comfortable with prescribing them to you. You had to prove you qualified, usually with a BMI of over 30 or 27 if you had other major health conditions. Even then, some doctors drag their feet saying things like, try diet and exercise first, just work a little bit harder and eat a little bit less, even if the patient has already tried this before. Fast forward now, and it's 2025, and that's all come to a crashing halt. GLP-1 medications are no longer seen as this last-ditch effort they're being used as first-line tools in weight management, metabolic health, and even prevention. Doctors are quicker to prescribe it. Insurance companies, they're catching up, but they've got a long way to come. And telehealth platforms have made it even easier. Let's pause here. Did your doctor ever make you feel guilty asking about these meds back in the early days because so many patients have told the story that they felt judged in 2023. Now in 2025, the tone in the room is totally different. Comment if you could relate to that. Comment down below. Now let's talk about how doctors monitor patients in 2023. Blood work was minimum. Maybe an A1C, maybe they checked in on your weight, but a lot of patients reported that they basically were handed the prescription and told, see in six months. There wasn't much guidance on nutrition, strength training, mental health. In 2025, the approach is totally different. It has evolved. Most doctors are running comprehensive panels, liver enzymes, thyroid, vitamin D, iron, and even hormone levels. Why? Because they've learned that long-term GLP-1 users are affected in many more ways than just weight. Doctors want to catch nutrient deficiencies, gallbladder issues, and other muscle issues a lot sooner before they become serious problem. And it's not just lab. Many clinics in 2025 now partner with dietitians, physical therapists. They're encouraging patients to hit protein goals, track resistance training, stay active, prevent muscle wasting compared to 2023 when the average advice was eat less, you'll lose weight faster. See the difference? Another big shift is doctors who are willing to treat in 2025 versus 2023. It's mostly patients with type 2 diabetes and severe obesity. There was a stigma around these GLP-1 medications for anyone else. Doctors worried that backlash if they gave them these medications for just losing weight. But in 2025, the mindset is broader. Doctors recognize that insulin resistance, PCOS, sleep apnea, fatty liver disease, and even cognitive decline are all part of the bigger metabolic picture. They're using GLP-1s as preventative medicine. That means more patients, younger and older, and even those who aren't technically obese are still being considered. Quick question for you. Do you think that that's a good thing? Or do you worry that it's expanding too far? Drop your thoughts in the comments. 
because this is one of the biggest debates in 2025. Now let's get into insurance coverage. In 2023, patients were stuck fighting with insurance companies for these so-called medications because they were considered cosmetic. Appeals were dragged on and out-of-pocket costs could be over $1,000. By 2025, coverage has expanded. Not perfect, but a little bit better. Medicare covers more cases. Private insurances have widened their criteria and self-pay programs were put into effect like Lilly Direct and have brought the cost down to patients who qualify. And it's not just cost, it's access. In 2023, you needed an in-person appointment and doctors were booked out for months. In 2025, with telehealth platforms like Roe, LifeMed, and Teladoc have, and they've entered the scene and you could get labs, prescriptions, and follow-ups without even stepping into an office. Some people love that convenience, while others worry that it's too hands-off. Where do you stand? You know, let me know in the comments. That's my usual thing here. Let's also talk about attitude inside the doctor's office. In 2023, a lot of providers felt that patients were taking the easy way out. They worried that the public perception or even their own professional reputations if they prescribe them too freely. But in 2025, that stigma has dropped. More doctors are openly saying obesity is a disease. Insulin resistance is a disease. Let me repeat that. Obesity is a disease. Insulin resistance is a disease. And these meds are treatment, not shortcuts. And that shift matters because patients feel less shame. The doctors feel freer to offer more support instead of just gatekeeping. Now, I don't want to paint 2025 as perfect because it isn't. There's still issues. There's still a little bit of shortages and access depends on your insurance and not every provider is up to date. But compared to 2023, the growth is undeniable. Here's an example. Imagine a patient in 2023 with PCOS and a BMI of 29. She asked her doctor for a GLP-1. Odds are she would have been denied, told to lose weight naturally first. Now in 2025, that same patient is more likely to get approval and not just approval, but guidance on nutrition, fertility, and long-term plans. That is a huge change. Let me know if you've seen a shift. You know, let me know in the comments. And are doctors offering GLP-1 sooner in your experience? We can't ignore that doctors' confidence and safety has grown. In 2023, long-term risks were unknown, so providers were cautious. By 2025, more data shows that these meds aren't just helpful for weight, but also cardiovascular risks, they protect the kidneys, and may even support brain health. That evidence has boosted their ability and their willingness to prescribe. And here's something you probably noticed in 2025. Doctors are now talking about customizing doses, new strategies. In 2023, everybody rushed up the ladder, higher doses faster. Today, more providers are going slower and letting you tolerate the medication better. Consider staying on lower doses for longer term, as long as it's effective. And that's a big shift. Again, let me know in the comments if this has happened to you. And here's my take. The biggest win in 2025 isn't just easier access. It's the doctors now see these medications as part of a long-term metabolic health and not just a quick fix. So what about you? Do you experience line up with the 2023 or the 2025 approach? That's right. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your story. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and bell so that you can keep getting this information.